This is Carl at National RV Detroit, and I'm going to show you through your Clipper Classic 1285 ST, SST, uh, tent camper. I'm going to do this uh, video in parts, at least two parts, maybe three, because I'm filming this on my own here. I'm the cameraman and the, uh, the demonstrator here, so um, what I'll do is I'll show, basically show you how to crank it up and show you around the outside a bit. Then I'll end this and I'll pick up and show you the rest in part two, okay? And maybe even part three, we'll see. I've never done it like this before, so we'll find out. Okay, so, let's see here. <clears throat> Your awning, I'm not gonna be able to roll out the entire awning and show you, but it obviously unzips from the center. You unzip it back this way, right? Then you're going to roll it out. Now this is the Dometic A&E awning. If you if you need to more instructions on it, you can go to their website and look at their their setup video. Um, basically, the poles are all contained in the metal piece called a rafter. When you roll it out, it'll be the piece that's all the way out. Uh, when it's a it's a lunum in it, it runs the the length or the width, I guess, of the awning. Um, and all the poles are self-contained in there. One pole is going to come back to here. If you pick this up, okay, you can see right there, it's like a, a receiver for a little ball joint. And so the, the, the uh, piece that folds directly back to the trailer to uh, hold this in the out position will attach right there, okay? One on each side. Then the other pole will fold to the ground. And that's all there is to it. It's very simple. Um, when you roll it in, you're going to roll it under, if that makes any sense. You're going to ro always roll it. Let me show my hand here. Under. So when you when you roll it in, the leaves or everything will fall off of it. Okay. All right. So this is just a radio antenna. This is you have an outside speaker and a light and some power. Obviously, you have a. Uh, this is a fill for your, your onboard fresh water tank. This does have a fresh water tank. Um, the reason you would use that is if you're going really rustic camping, you can take the water with you uh, and pump it. There's a, there's a 12 volt pump inside to pump the water. Um, most places you go to will have city water. And this, you can hook city water up on this also. That's well, general, generally what you'll use. But like some of the older state parks, they don't have plumbing on the campsites, but they got a fill station when you first go in. That's another uh, instance where you would use this, uh, the onboard tank, okay? This down here is an LP Quick Connect for your grill. Um, obviously, you're just gonna push this in, and there's a male connector that slides in there, and you let it go, and it locks into place. Then, I don't know if you can see it here, I'm trying to, then you will turn this on to turn the gas on, okay? You got a stabilizer jacks, that's a three quarter inch hex head, so a three quarter inch socket will, will operate this. You also get a crank with it, so you can do it either way. Most people will use a socket in their electric drill or battery charge or power drill these days. All right. Okay. Here we have a drain here, uh, which I'll show you more about that when we get inside, all right. Uh, you have to un hook these latches when you hook them this this outside piece has to be straight down and you hook it up like this all right then you're gonna go like this all right I'll adjust those a little bit for you so we'll we look at that one is undone this one we'll do next because we're going that way this is just a, a charger for a solar battery um, panel so if you were to get a solar panel to charge the battery you would plug it in right there okay you got air conditioning obviously okay so uh, this is your power cord right here it pulls out it's, it's 25 feet long and if you see the end it's 30 amp still 110 AC but it's a 30 amp system we give you a reducer to reduce this down so you can um, plug it in at home. Just keep in mind that this air conditioner will draw more than 20 amps when it kicks on, especially when the compressor kicks on. So if you're using it at home and you just have it plugged into a regular household circuit, it could pop your, the air conditioner could pop your circuit breaker. Uh, keep that in mind also. 
This is the what it, the sink drain. It just unscrews. It, the threads are like a garden hose thread, so you can just screw a hose on there, take one with you, run it to a drain or to a bucket or whatever you would want to do. All right. The this is the water heater. It has a six gallon tank on the back of it. Um, this is the drain plug right here. Uh, you can see it has uh, uh, an anode rod attached to it. This is just a sacrificial rod that uh, uh, basically it's an easier target. It's a softer target for the minerals in the water to attack. So when you're using well water and a lot of waters out in the country uh, that are, have high mineral contents, it'll, it'll, the, the, it'll attack this rod first and eat it away instead of the lining of your tank, okay? So it's just, that's why they call it an anode rod itself, a sacrificial rod, okay? It screws right in there, inch and a sixteenth socket to tighten it, okay? Always let the pressure out here before you pull the, the drain plug or else you get, it'll come flying out of there plus you'll get drenched, so always keep that in mind. Um, this is just a spray port with a quick connect for a, a sprayer. All right, this is where you operate your refrigerator. Now this is a three-way refrigerator. It's gas absorption, so it can run on LP gas. So it runs on 110 AC, which is operated right here. You would just turn it on like that. I think you can see that here. I'm getting a weird glare there. Okay, there, right there. Okay, let me get a different position so I can see, okay. And if you wanted to run it on 12 volt while pulling it down the road, you can turn that on. Like it says here, only use one energy source at a time, so never double up on them. Okay, and you can also light this on gas. So, basically there's a little, if you need to, you can hear it light, but if you need, you can, you can look inside there. Okay, you're basically you're going to put this to on, just like that. You're going to depress it, and hold it down, and then spark it. And that's how you light it. It'll, when, if the, if the, uh, line going to the uh, uh, the gas line going to the to the flame is is doesn't have gas in it it'll take a little longer for you to light it but it'll work its way up there and it'll light um, so it's that simple that's off so you can run it on 110 AC 12 volt DC or LP gas never use two or three different sources at the same time you only use one all right okay you have a pull-out slide here, which is going to be operated by this. Okay, that is the vent for your furnace and some makeup air. Um, you got a 12-volt deep, deep cycle battery. You got a 20-pound uh, 20 20 LP tank. All right. Okay, so this this up opens here. I'm, I'm trying to, to get this so you can... See, see it. I have to back up every now and then here, but you can see this has your that is your grill inside there, some wheel chocks and a front wheel, so you can move it or maneuver it around. Okay, this also slides out here, so you have to undo this. I'll just drop that there for now. Twist this down. Let's see if I can do it all at once here. Whoops. I guess I should unlock it first, like so. So let me see if you can see what I'm doing here. So it does slide out. And the, the reason you want to do that, uh, you can pull it right off and use this to, to, you know, to transport bikes on or whatever you want to do. Uh, it's got some tie-offs here. Um, it'd, be, it'd be great for bicycles because the weight is up front where you want it. Or when, you're, when you have the bed out, right, when the bed is pulled out when it's in the up position, you can't access this trunk normally in a, in a trailer, but this way you can pull it out and access it. So it's really a good idea, actually. Okay. I mentioned there was a city water hookup. I think I went right past it here. Let me come back around. See if I didn't lose it here. Oh, right here. Okay. I didn't see it because of this. So I told you that there's an onboard tank. Uh, you can use if you don't have city water. Most of the time you're going to have city water, so you just hook your hose right up to there and it's pressurized, ready to go. All right. Now, this trailer has to be winterized because it has plumbing. So keep in mind, in the fall, you're going to have to pump antifreeze into it or have somebody do it. That's something you're going to have to educate yourself about a bit. But basically, on the back of this water heater is a tank. And on the back of the tank are valves. You can, you can 
put it into bypass mode because basically you can't get antifreeze into the water heater because it leaves a really foul taste and a foul smell. So before you would pump anti antifreeze into it, you would bypass the water heater using the valves on the back. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right. So what's, I'm going to pause now or, or stop completely. And, uh, well, let me do this. I changed my mind. Let me see if I can crank it up for you right now. Let's see. So there's four latches. We undid two of them. Let's get the other two. Okay. So we'll come over here to the crank, like so. This is the labor intensive part here. Let me get the lid out of the way for the battery. Okay. So it's going to be cranked up like that. I'm going to break, uh, and then when I come back, it, this will be up. Basically, you're going to take it up till this line is taunt. This line right here is taunt. This, the, this line is set so when the roof is up and this is taunt, it's in the correct position to, to insert the door in, in the screen door in there. So uh, you want it to be taunt so the screen door will fit correctly. So, okay, I'll uh, continue in part two. Thanks.